Hi again, it's Kiri. Um, today I want to talk about dealing with uh, physical, sexual, mental, emotional abuse. Um, anybody who's watched my My Story video, which is up on my channel as of last night, uh, you know that I dealt with all three of these types of abuse. And honestly, it takes a lot to get through, uh, you know, these different types of abuse. It really takes a lot. It takes a really strong person. Um, a lot of times when someone goes through something like this, they resort to drugs. They resort to alcohol. Uh, they resort to anything that can help them forget about this. I know because I've lived it. Um, but what I want to tell you is that as far as mental emotional abuse goes, uh, the reason that person is saying these things to you it's their own insecurities. Nothing they say to you is true. Um, my dad used to tell me that I was fat and I was ugly and I was stupid and nobody would ever love me and all this different stuff and you know when you're told that every day you become trained to believe it like it's it's the truth and you know you start to have your own insecurities based on what someone else has said but it's it's not the truth the thing of it is is that you're a beautiful person that's it. That's the bottom line. You're a beautiful person. You're not stupid. You're not, you know, ugly. You're not any of this other stuff that somebody tries to tell you to break you down. And the earlier you realize that, the easier things will be. As far as physical abuse goes, um, you know, I went through this for years. Uh, I went through physical abuse as early as I can remember is age seven and I moved out of my dad's house when I was 17 almost 17 so about 10 years you know I went through physical abuse and you know I'll just I'll just show you okay this right here if you can see it this is a scar where my dad threw a knife at me and it slipped my leg open. I had to get 11 stitches. Um, but that's a scar that I'm going to carry with me the rest of my life. Uh, this too. If you can see that on my elbow. Um, I can't really pinpoint its location because I'm trying to... Yeah, there it is. It looks like a heart shape. Uh, my dad threw a electronic screwdriver at me and the bit stuck in my arm you know and for a long time those scars bothered me for a long time you know they hurt me and I kept thinking you know somebody's not gonna love me because of my scars uh, nobody's gonna want to uh, see me because of my scars or want to be around me because of my scars you know I, I've lived that and I know the things that it puts you through but you want to know something, the coolest thing about this, you know, about survival through these things, is that you can wear those scars with pride. You can tell people, look, I've been through hell. I've been through so many different things. And I have these scars that remind me of it every day. But guess what? It's my past. I survived it. Those scars are just, you know, they're not temporary. They're forever. But... They're there to remind you that there was one point in your life you had to be stronger than you've ever been. You know, and it took me forever to realize that. I was so insecure about it. I was so insecure about the, the you know, mental abuse I went through, emotional abuse. You know, when I first got with my husband, I kept trying to tell him, you know, well, you don't you don't want to be with me because I'm ugly, or you don't want to be with me because I'm stupid, or et cetera, et cetera. You know, I continuously 
said these things and it was because I was molded into believing these things about myself when they weren't true none of them were true whatever someone says to you it's because they can't deal with their own stuff you know and and the physical abuse I know sometimes the physical abuse is a lot harder to deal with than the mental and emotional abuse and the reason for that is because, you know, you just, having that pain just makes it seem more real. At least with mental or emotional abuse, you could just, you know, block it out and, and act like it isn't there. You know, but with physical abuse, with scars, with things like that, it's always there. It's always a constant reminder. I'm sorry, I had to yell at my bird. Well, not really yell, but try and get her to be quiet. Um, but anyway, you know, I, I know it's difficult, but everything you're going through right now will pass. And your scars you can carry with pride. Even your mental, emotional scars. You know, once you get past those, you can be like, well, look who I used to be. Now, as far as sexual abuse goes, sexual abuse is probably one of the worst types of abuse you can encounter because it messes with your emotions, it messes with you physically, you know, I know you feel guilty and like it's your fault, but the truth is, it's not your fault. The person that is doing this to you, that's their problem, that's their fault. You can't help it if you're being taken advantage of like that. You can't, you know, you can't control that. That's not something you have control over. Because a lot of times, these sexual predators, they're all... Emerald, hush. These sexual predators, they're all about breaking down your confidence and making you feel terrible about yourself. They're all about trying to make themselves feel better. And you know what? they're the ones who are going to pay for it in the end. God doesn't let one person get by with what they do. And even if they're not punished here on earth, they will be punished once they have passed away. And I know that's terrible. You're thinking, well, you know, I deserve justice now. Yes, but with the way the system is, the way the government is, the way the system is, you know, a lot of people aren't going to do anything about it. They're not going to do one thing about it. They're just going to let it continue. You know, but there are cases like mine. You know, my dad is in prison for everything he did. And, you know, but the thing of it is, is that the best thing for you to do to be able to cope with all of this forgive your attacker forgive the person who is putting you through this because if you don't it's gonna cause you so many problems you're gonna continue to have problems and it's gonna be terrible on you the sooner you can just forgive and let it go the better off you are I promise you that would you hush I'm sorry, my bird's squawking. Um, but you know, the sooner you can forgive, the the quicker you can move to your into your healing process. You know, and once you finally find peace with everything, you'll realize all the things I've realized. It's taken me three years to get past ten years of hurt. And for some people, it takes longer. And to be honest, I, I did get to the point to where I was uh, using drugs all the time, and I was and I was, uh, you know, drinking all the time, and I was doing everything I could to try and forget about this. And that is not the answer. Alcohol and drug abuse that that is just not the answer at all. And if I can urge you in any direction, I would urge you not to resort. To that type of life because you get where you have a dependency on it and by the time you sober up 
by the time you're done with everything, everything you were thinking about before, you're thinking about 20 times, uh, you're thinking about it 20 times more, and it hurts you a lot more. And that's no way to live. So, I just want to tell you, I'm to summarize, uh, mental abuse, nothing they say to you is true. Mental emotional abuse, nothing. It's all based on their insecurities. Physical abuse, yes. It is very hard to deal with the pain. It's very hard to deal with lots of things like that. But you carry those scars with pride. You let them know, you know, hey, I've had a past. And as far as sexual abuse goes, it is not your fault. You are not the problem. And my last thing, whatever you do, do not resort to drugs and alcohol to solve your problems because it just makes things worse. So that's my blog for today. Uh, like and subscribe. I have videos every day. Uh, yesterday I posted two videos. One was my story and another was uh, people feeling like nobody cares about them. Uh, so, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Love you.